last week. Well, first of all, welcome. It is Monday. Um, we do have a special guest today, so I am super, super, super excited. Um, today, we're going to be talking about spousal rape, um, and I want to give everyone a chance to log on. But before our special guest comes on, and I, I pray that she's able to make it this morning. Before she comes on, I want to, um, what do I want to say? I want to lay some ground work because, and let me know if you all can see me. Let me know if you all can hear me. Just let me know because, um, for a long time, let me start it over. Let me, let me backtrack. There was a question posted about a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago, and it was talking about consent and, you know, does your spouse have to consent for sex? And my response, and this is just off the dome, speaking from my own personal experience, my own life being married 22 years, my response was the consent was when we signed the marriage license. I laughed it off, continued on with my day. Um, hold on. I just want to make sure that I can. I want to be able to see your comments. Hmm. Let me know if you all can comment. Like, say something on here just so that I can see if you all can comment. Because I'm looking and it looks like the views are going up and down. Because before I get off into this, I just want to make sure that we able to communicate with each other and see each other. I, I want to I wanna see. Because it looks like I'm having an issue with the comments. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So I'm able to see you all now. All right. Cause at first I was wondering, I, I was like, okay, look like the views kind of going up and down. I didn't know if you all could see or hear me. Okay. So that's what I was saying. Um, it was a comment and it was, um, it was a question asked about consent and marriage and sex and off the dome, I responded. The consent came when we signed the marriage license, laughed it off, went on about my business. But I later came back around to that post and when I started reading some of the comments, it made me more so aware that everybody's experience in marriage in their bedroom may not necessarily be my experience. And I'm saying that because when I think about sex, I think about it in a, a manner of being fulfilled with one another. Um, I think about giving myself to somebody that I, that I know that loves me. And a lot of time, and, and nobody's going to be perfect that we're dealing with. But the thing is, I'm looking at it from my point of view. But when I went back and I read those comments, it was heartbreaking. And I didn't realize that so many women are being um, sexually assaulted by their husbands or being violated or raped by their husbands. So I immediately went back and I apologized for not being sensitive about something that was really a serious matter that I was joking about because I laugh and play about how I take that dick all the time. When he sleep, I would start sucking that dick. And in, in other words, I'm not waiting for his permission for me to put his dick in my mouth. He's not waiting for my permission when he crawls like a, a animal and I'm his prey and he just doing what he do and I'm just allowing and letting. So it made me understand that 
everybody's um, marriage doesn't work like that. And for whatever reason, some women want to be able to say yes and no. I give you permission. It's okay to do this to me. No, it's not okay to do this to me. And the thing is, my husband and I, we have an understanding about our bedroom. And he knows that I'm not going to be turned off or put off by him. I don't want to say forcing himself on me, but about him maybe just lubing up and, you know, getting behind me and sliding in without me saying that it's okay to do this. Okay. So I immediately had to go back and I immediately had to apologize to the women for not being sensitive about a, a conversation that, that we need to have and a conversation that is very serious. Um, so with that being said, I have some statistics. Let's see. And one in three women are having unwanted sex with their partner. I found that to be extremely disturbing. That's like you line up three women in groups. You put a group of three women, three women, three women, three women. In that group, you're going to have one woman that is in that group that is basically having unwanted sex. Meaning, for whatever reason, she may feel like she done said no and he don't take her no serious. Or she feels that she's being forced to do something that she doesn't want to do. Or, for whatever reason, the sex is not wanted. Her hormones may be off balance. She may be on some type of medical leave or dealing with some type of situation where she has to rest her body physically, medically. And her husband still feels the need that she needs to perform her wifely duties. So when I was reading the statistics, the numbers were disturbing to me. I have always enjoyed the side of the industry where it's the party scene, it's the strippers, it's the products, it's the turn up part of the industry. But as I have gotten older and I have grown with this industry and I have educated myself and became a sex coach and did all of these other things, what I realized is, of course, I would love for everybody to relate to the party scene and the turn up and all of this. But what I have to understand is when I'm meeting with, when I'm hosting at a party, there are going to be women at this party who want to experience what all these other women are experiencing, but for whatever reason, they can't relate because that's not how their bedroom operates. And it's hard for me to want to come in and buy products and get all this stuff to turn up in the bedroom when I have somebody that is violating me sexually. Um, so, let's see. I was reading the statistics and it says that Women, uh, some women are married to men that are dominating and they treat them as property. I posted up a video last week, right when I said that I would be talking about this particular subject. I posted up a video and this man was talking to this woman so bad, but he kept on reminding her that she was in his house and he seemed to be a lot older than her and she seemed to be very young. And it's almost like she was putting up with all of this just to be able to have a place to lay her head. And what I find is, excuse me, y'all, my nose and stuff itching. What I find is sometimes, especially women who don't have their own financial security, they will put up with a whole lot just to have somewhere to stay, just to be able to provide shelter for themselves and their children. And, and this is just the truth. Um, another thing that I realized is when you're dealing with spouses that rape women, a lot of times there's a lot of other domestic abuse. So in other words, you're not having sex with your partner because you desire to have sex with them. You are actually having sex with your partner because you fear them and you fear that 
they're going to jump on you or fight you or try to hurt you. So what you do is just kind of lay there and allow everything to happen because you're fearful, right? Then um, we have the women who are pregnant. And this by far to me is just, when I thought about it, I was like, this is horrible. A lot of times doctors will put you on risk, pelvic risk, meaning lay back, prop your feet up because for whatever reason, your baby is in danger of coming early or, you know, you move around a lot and you have had miscarriages in the past. So in order to see this pregnancy full term, I have to put you on rest, put your body on rest, meaning that you cannot perform physically for your spouse. And these same spouses will turn around and take it. Even after the doctor says that your body needs to be on rest. Um... The last one is suppose you and your spouse decide that you're going to separate. You may live in completely separate households, but legally you're still married. These particular uh, situations, the spouses still believe that we together, you belong to me. You still my wife, so you still have to perform as my wife, even though we are not together. Um... And a lot of times people say, well, what constitute as spousal rape? And the definition basically says that any type of, you can fondle, penetrate, anal, vaginal, um, oral, all of these things uh, can constitute as rape, okay? Um, I, I just found that it was very disturbing when I was looking at the statistics and when I was reading the stories that were on the group page, it was very disturbing to me. Um, so, and this is a live where you all can actually comment and give feedback. Let me know your concerns. I'm just going through making sure I'm not missing anything that anybody is saying. And I'm trying to give our special guests some time to be able to um to be able to get logged in. I'm I'm waiting on her request to come through and actually get logged in. So with that being said, if you all have any questions, concerns, comments. And another thing that I learned when I was doing my research on this was July 5th, 1993, it became a crime to rape your wife or to go on with unwanted sex when your wife basically said she didn't want it to happen. So that means that this law is very new on the books. Before 1993, your husband can just take it. And I don't think that a lot of people even understand that this law is on the books. Okay? Um, so this is a fairly new law. Let's see. Let me see if I can invite her in. I was waiting on her to invite herself in. So let me check and see if she's having any problems with getting in. Let's see. One second, child. I would have liked to do this. I, I like to do my um my lives actually face to face. That but you know with COVID. We're having to make other arrangements. Let's see. I am trying to see if I can invite her in. Okay. All right. So, LaRonda, is there a way that you can invite yourself in um, so that I can, okay, bring her up on the camera. Here we go. Hey. 
Let's see. Let me see something here. Let me log out of this one. Y'all be patient. Okay, so it's saying that it won't allow me to. Can you send a request, LaRonda? Okay, so 